Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the introduction to a new dimension in geometric camera calibration. Geometric camera calibration is essential in a lot of applications. For example, to measure distances in images, to detect objects in images, to compensate for high distortion levels, especially when it comes to cameras with a wide field of view, or to align stereo camera pairs to each other in an accurate way. The current methods that are out there rely on test charts. Um, those test charts can have or contain a regular grid of dots or crosses or can be a checkerboard. Um, and typically those charts have to fill the field of view of the camera. So very large charts are necessary um, if you have a camera with a wide field of view. Um, if you want to make things uh, a little more compact or measure at infinity, you can use relay lenses. But those relay lenses introduce another level of distortion that has to be characterized first and also be eliminated out of the measurements uh, later on. So all of these methods uh, currently allow for the distortion measurement and also the measurement of the inner orientation of the camera, but they're not able to measure the outer orientation of the camera. So that's why we looked into an, a new approach. And um, the approach we're talking about here uh, uses a laser as the illumination source and a collimator um, to expand the laser beam uh, and to illuminate a diffractive optical element. That diffractive optical element basically creates a regular grid of light dots that are originated virtually from infinity. And when you put a camera in front of that, you basically capture that regular grid of light dots. This is what it looks like. The image on the bottom right uh, shows the regular grid of the light dots and it also shows the zero diffraction order in the center of the image. Um, interestingly, this grid is translation insensitive. So if you shift the camera in front of the diffractive optical element, uh, the structure does not move at all. Uh, however, when you rotate your camera, you will see that the structure changes, especially the the position of the zero diffraction order in the center moves to um, another area of the image depending on the rotation. So that actually means that we can measure the rotation angles out of an analyzing the image. We don't need a relay lens and it's a very compact design. Um, we can measure large field of views up to 120, 125 um, degrees, um, even larger degrees may be possible but have not been tested yet. And of course we can also adjust stereo camera pairs to each other. This is what the, tip, the current prototype looks like and the beam diameter uh, used with that device is 75 millimeters. Of course we're also working on larger uh, beam diameters um, to enable the measurement of uh, stereo camera pairs with a larger st stereo base or um, to increase the distance between the camera and the diffractive optical element. Uh, in order to, to do that you need a, a bigger diffractive optical element that is illuminated by the laser. Let's. <coughs> uh, look a little bit into some background information. So the formula you see here basically describes <clears throat> the um, diffractive optical element and uh, the angles alpha and beta um, basically show the, the angles of the diffractive optical element uh, in relation to the uh, incident plane wave coming from the laser. And of course, the uh, frequency of the DOE and uh, wavelengths of the laser also matter in this case. <clears throat> then, of course, what also matters is the rotation of the camera. So the uh, capital letter R here uh, stands for a 3x3 camera rotation matrix. And also the translation of the camera, uh, T here, um, uh, well, we know it does not matter 
um, is built into this formula. Um, we'll show you the translation independence in a little experiment that is going to be placed after this uh, theoretical introduction. Um, and we'll also show you the rotation um, angles and how sensitive it actually is uh, to the rotation of the camera and it can be evaluated from the captured image. Um, from that three-dimensional um, light dot um, image, we actually have to uh, calculate the projection of the or into the two-dimensional image captured by the camera. And uh, for for these things, uh, the um, the pixel coordinates in, in on the camera matrix matrix come into play. So we need uh, or actually get the focal lengths out of this and also the principal point of the camera. These are two images. Um, so the one on the left it shows an image captured with a camera with a, about 120 degrees field of view. And the one on the right is with, captured with a camera with a 100 degrees field of view, um, just to show you what it looks like. For cameras with very long focal lengths, uh, we may need an um, additional um, diffractive optical element with uh, a finer grid pattern uh, in order to have enough dots available for the evaluation. <clears throat> and then la last but not least, um, the distortion model comes into play. So here is a standard rotational symmetric distortion model that many people use. But when we look into automotive applications, for example, and uh, a camera behind a windshield, so the windshield itself may not introduce rotational symmetric distortion, but may introduce another type of distortion, uh, which needs to be characterized. So the model here may change depending on the application of your specific camera and may also need to be developed in the future. So what do we get out of this? We get the principal point, we get the focal lengths, we get the coefficients for the distortion polynomial, uh, we get the angles alpha and beta for um, the diffractive optical element um, in relation to the expanded laser beam that is incident to, the, to that DOE. And we also get the three angles of the camera uh, in relation to the incident uh, uh, beam coming from or after the diffractive optical element. Okay. So here we have a little device. This is the laser part, the collimator. And in the front, we have our diffractive optical element. Now, the only thing we have to do is to switch it on. Then we put our little camera that's under test in front of the device, show it the ease of use. Um, I just use a cell phone camera here because we now have our display and you can look at that display, um, what the image actually looks like. Okay, when we now look at the screen here, I can show you that when you shift the camera from left to right, nothing changes, except that when you get too far, you see the border of the DOE. But in general, this whole thing is translational insensitive. Whereas when you rotate the camera, show you that here, in this direction or that direction, you see that the zero order shifts significantly and that's actually what we want to measure. We want to get the outer orientation of our camera. And then we just use that image and run it through our analysis and get all the values that uh, I've already described. Now let's have a look at the analysis. I can open a file, capture it. And when I click on the file, I get a little representation here with um, all the dots, etc. Then I just click the Analyze button and the analysis is done. So down here you can see all the values 
that we talked about. So the focal lengths, um, the angles alpha, beta, the three angles for the camera, uh, the principal point of the camera, and also the distortion coefficients. Um, I can also uh, activate the grid and sh look at the detected grid points. I can also look at the reference grid if I want to. And there's also the chance of looking at the plot for the distortion, um, which may sometimes also be helpful. But that's about it. So it's very simple, very straightforward, and uh, very useful. Thank you.